Excitement. Come on, India! Happiness. Disappointment. Pain. Cricket is a game of many emotions. However, few fans have suffered as much heartbreak as the loyal Kiwi supporters. Got to go! He's got it! England have won the World Cup by the barest of margins! Agony! Agony for New Zealand! Despite entering almost every tournament as one of the favourites to take the trophy home, New Zealand never seems to make it to the finish line. Today, we'll be taking a deep dive into the entire history of New Zealand cricket and see what makes them one of the biggest chokers in cricket. Cricket has a rich history in this nation with the first recorded game in 1842. Cricket was a popular pastime sport even before this official match. The legendary Charles Darwin recalled seeing freed Maori slaves enjoying a game all the way back in 1835. However, cricket really became a serious sport in 1894 when they formed their first national team and took on New South Wales. They lost that tie by 160 runs, but got their revenge in 1895 and 96 when they took down the New South Wales team by 142 runs. New Zealand faced their first real international opponents in their neighbours, Australia, in 1904-1905. They couldn't have asked for tougher opponents as this team featured cricketing greats Clem Hill, Victor Trumper, and Warwick Armstrong. As expected, they were thoroughly beaten, losing by an innings and 358 runs. This is still the second largest defeat in New Zealand's first-class history. Sadly, the Kiwis had to wait a very long time for their first taste of test cricket. 25 years later, in 1930, they finally acquired test status as they faced off against the mighty England in a four-match series. Although they lost the first one, the team showed great fighting spirit to draw the next three tests. Even more remarkably, legendary batting duo Stewie Dempster and Jackie Mills had a partnership of 276 for the first wicket, which is still the highest partnership for New Zealand against the Three Lions. The Black Caps had to play the waiting game again to register their first test victory. Even a team featuring all-time greats such as Burt Sutcliffe, Martin Donnelly, John R. Reed, and Jack Cowie failed to get any victories for their national side. After 25 long years in 1955, the Kiwis finally won their first test match against a super strong West Indy side featuring legends Gary Sobers, Everton Weeks, and Dennis Atkins. John Reid captained his side against this tough opponent and came out victorious thanks to some brilliant bowling from Harry Cave. Unfortunately for Reid, this was one of the only wins under his captaincy. Over the next 20 years, New Zealand only won seven tests and they had to wait till 1970 to win their first series against Pakistan. But this win kick-started their road to greatness. The biggest lacking in the New Zealand side was their bowling attack. This all changed in 1973 when a young Richard Hadley burst onto the scene. This right-arm bowler had a dangerous outswinger that caught many batsmen by surprise. Clean bowl. He also acted as a reliable middle-order batsman when his side needed it. His addition to the squad slowly but surely changed the course of New Zealand cricket. What a wonderful performance from Richard Hadley, one of the all-time great performances at the Gabba. And in the other semi-final, West Indies, of course, the favourites to beat New Zealand. The Kiwis clearly had no idea what a talent they had in 1975 as they decided to leave him on the bench in the World Cup semi-final against the great West Indies who won the match by five wickets thanks to a great innings from Alvin Kalicharan. The West Indies have won this match by five wickets. And that sparkling 72 by Alvin Kalicharan won him the Man of the Match award for the second time running. New Zealand bounced back from this fairly quickly as they registered their first test victory against England just three years later in 1978, thanks to a 10-wicket haul from Hadley. In 1979, the Kiwis reached the semi-finals of the World Cup again, and this time, they did repeat the mistake of leaving Sir Richard Hadley out of the squad. Well, unfortunately for them, the England side they faced was just far too good with inspired performances from Graham Gooch and Mike Hendrick. And he's yoked him, and the delivery pays off there for Hendrick. Over the next few years, many great players joined the team, including the greatest New Zealand batsman to grace the pitch, Martin Crowe. 
Don't just take it from us. Legendary Pakistani bowler Wasim Akram named him the best batsman he had ever bowled to. But I have to pick one guy. It has to be the Martin Crow. I think his technique was as such. He was always on a front foot and he always paid the in-swing. Crow and Hadley formed an iconic duo who terrified bowling and batting sides alike. During the 80s, New Zealand became a strong test side. However, their ODI performances were not up to par with the quality they had in the squad as they failed to reach the semifinals in the 1983 and 1987 World Cup. In the 1992 World Cup, this legendary side finally reached the semifinals only to be knocked out by the eventual winners, Pakistan. It's called it. It's four runs. And Pakistan have won the first semi-final at Eden Park, a magnificent performance by Martin Josh. Crow scored an impressive total of 91 runs, but the bowling from the New Zealand was simply not up to the mark, with the only noteworthy bowler being Danny Morrison. Around this time, the team would welcome one of its best all-rounders, Chris Cairns, a lightning-fast pace bowler and a stylish middle-order batsman. Legendary batsman Stephen Fleming also joined the mix. Even with all of this new talent, the team could not make it past the quarterfinals in the 1996 World Cup due to some brilliant batting from the Australian Wah brothers. And there is Mark Horse 100, one of his greatest. The next year, their bowling side was strengthened even more with the addition of all-time great spin bowler Daniel Vittori. Yeah! That's out! The team did slightly better in the 1999 World Cup, reaching the semifinals. However, they were knocked out by an especially strong Pakistan bowling attack, boasting the likes of Wasim Akram, Shoaib Akhtar, and Saklain Mushtaq. In 2000, the time had finally arrived. New Zealand won the first ever ICC trophy, the ICC knockout, under the captaincy of Stephen Fleming. Full toss, they've got it. New Zealand win this ICC knockout trophy by four wickets. They went up against a legendary India side featuring Sachin Tendulkar, Rahul Dravid, Yavraj Singh, and Captain Saurav Ganguly. Yet, they emerged victorious with a fabulous man of the match performance from Chris Cairns, who scored 102 runs off of 113 balls. Oh, that's Cairns' 100. What a fine innings that is. That is a marvelous effort from the man. Nothing less than a standing ovation. That's what he deserves, Chris Cairns. Surely, this was a sign of what was to come. Surely, it meant that New Zealand could expect to win a few more trophies in the following years. Spoiler alert, it was not. The Kiwis would have to wait more than 20 years to get their hands on silverware again. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Soon after taking home the knockout trophy, the New Zealand side would welcome the debut of future captain and explosive batsman Brendan McCullum in 2002. From the moment he arrived, he lit up the dressing room with his exciting style of play and beautiful shots. Oh, and again, that's gonna be six more. It's even bigger. One of the most versatile and destructive batsmen of all time, New Zealand had found themselves quite the talent in Baz. The 2002 Champions Trophy was a total letdown as the team failed to make it past the group stage. The 2003 World Cup did not bring much joy to fans either as they could not even make it past the second round. The team failed to make it out of the group stages of the Champions Trophy again in 2004, but they did reach the semis in 2006, where they were knocked out by a strong Australian side. Short edge, is it? As Australia defeat New Zealand by 34 runs. 2007 was a special year for cricket as it featured two World Cups. So how did New Zealand do in the inaugural T20 World Cup? Pretty well. They lost in the semis to a strong Pakistan side. What a way to win the match. Pakistan team celebrate. All of Pakistan celebrates its cartwheels. As for the ODI World Cup, they performed similarly as they were knocked out by Sri Lanka in the semi-finals. There it is, a boundary wins it for Sri Lanka. T20 cricket did not bring about a lot of happiness for the Kiwis. Few teams were affected more by the Indian Cricket League controversy than New Zealand. BBCI abused its powers to stop all players in that league from receiving national team call-ups. This is because the Indian Cricket League was a direct rival of BCCI's IPL. As a result, they could not call up vital team members of Shane Bond, Lou Vincent, Andre Adams, Hamish Marshall, and Daryl Tuffy. 
In 2009, the team would suffer their first international final defeat at the hands of Ricky Ponting's Australia in the ICC Champions Trophy. The Kangaroos won by six wickets thanks to a marvelous century from Shane Watson. He goes again, consecutive sixes. So back to back hundreds here for Shane Watson. Australia win. It's Australia, such a powerful team. The team also failed to make it past the second round of the T20 World Cup in the 2009, 2010, 2012, and 2014 editions. In the 2011 ODI World Cup, they put in a respectable performance, exiting the tournament in the semis to an incredible Sri Lanka side. Balled in! Knocked them over! In 2013, they had a poor run in the Champions Trophy, where they exited in the group stage. The Black Caps entered the 2015 World Cup as an incredible side featuring exciting pace bowler Trent Bolt, veteran spin bowler Daniel Vittori, three incredible batsmen in Kane Williamson, Ross Taylor, and Martin Guptill, and of course, the captain himself, Brendan McCullough. As expected, the team had a phenomenal campaign, going into the finals undefeated. Martin Guptill ended the series as the leading run scorer with 547 runs to his name, and Trent Bolt led the bowling charts with 22 wickets. Sadly, the team fell short against the Baggy Greens in the finals. Yeah! Can you believe it? The Australian bowling was just too good on that day, restricting New Zealand to a low score of 183 with some brilliant performances from Mitchell Starch. Has he taken it? Yes, he has. I Mitchell Johnson. Oh, he's gone through him. And man of the match, James Falk. He's got another in the first door of the power play. James Faulkner is turning this match around. Australia won the match by seven wickets and took home the trophy for a record fifth time. And Australia are champions of the world. Champions of 2015, ladies and gentlemen, the Australians. 2016 did not bring the fans much joy either, as they only made it to the semi-finals of the T20 World Cup, where they were knocked out by England by seven wickets. Long way up. This should be the end of the game. It is the end of the game. The 2017 Champions Trophy was no fun either, as they failed to make it past the group stage. With these recent showings, fans were not too excited about the 2019 World Cup, but the Kiwis were about to prove them wrong with a brilliant campaign. The team made it all the way to the finals with the help of Lockie Ferguson's lightning fast bowling and Kane Williamson's leadership and excellent batting. But what happened in the finals still haunts New Zealand fans to this day. New Zealand won the toss and elected to bat first. They set a respectable target of 241 with Henry Nichols and Tom Latham both putting in great performances. England then proceeded to tie the score following a brilliant innings from Ben Stokes. On the money, but it's out of the ground, is it? Is it out of the ground? It is! For the first time ever, the World Cup final would need a super over. Are we in for a super over? I've got to go quick. Out! I'm sure he's out. We're going to a super over. Team scoring more runs in the super over will simply... It turned out even the super over wasn't enough to divide the two teams as they both scored 15 runs in the final over. In the end, it came down to boundary count and England took it home with 26 boundaries in comparison to New Zealand's 17. Got to go! He's got it! England have won the World Cup by the barest of margins! Agony! Agony for New Zealand! Just like that, New Zealand had lost two World Cup finals on the bounce. As if that weren't enough, the Black Caps also the finals of the 2021 T20 World Cup against Finch's Australia with Mitchell Marsh and David Warner delivering some excellent performances. In the 2022 T20 World Cup, New Zealand failed to make it past Pakistan in the semis. They also finished sixth place in the 2021-2023 ICC World Test Championship. A disappointing result, especially because they won the inaugural edition of the tournament. The 2023 World Cup was not the most joyous World Cup for the Kiwis either, other than the discovery of batting talent Rasheen Ravindra. The tournament had few positive notes to take home. They were completely humiliated in the semis by the host nation India, failing to meet the monstrous 397 total and losing by a massive margin of 70 runs. And Bumrah followed by Shami. Kohli, Gill and Ayer were just too much for the bowlers to handle and the batting lineup was dismantled by Mohamed Shami. Oh, that's close. That's really close, yeah. So why did the Kiwis keep choking? Well, your guess is as good as ours. We're just glad that we got to see this amazing side finally lift a trophy in the 2019-2021 ICC World Test Championship. Big wicket, Cody. Whips that one away. 
Lawrence Taylor and Kane Williamson are there for this moment. Kane Williamson and his team, world test champion. We hope to see them find their stride and lift many more in the near future.